So the most common question I get asked, whether it's here on YouTube, Instagram, or Zoom lessons is, how do I start to play the changes in relation to the music of the Grateful Dead? And you know, that's a kind of a heavy question because the unsexy answer is just by putting in the work. You know, that's picking up the guitar, practicing the harmony, the scales, and a ton of listening and applying it to the instrument. But, you know, there are tools that can help you along the way. And with that being said, let's dive into today's video, Playing the Changes 101. So like today's video title mentions, today's video is all centered around playing the changes 101 in relation to the music of the Grateful Dead. That seems to be the most common question I get. How do I play the changes over a Grateful Dead song? The unsexy answer, you know, is you just got to put the time in. You gotta practice, you gotta understand the scales, the harmony of the song, you know, the progression with an equal amount of listening because you need the context to know what it's supposed to sound like. Because if you don't and you have all these tools, you know, you don't know how to use them. And so today's video, I wanna give you all the tools on how to start approaching it, you know, the song we're gonna to use today is Scarlet Begonias, which to me is a great song to start with playing the changes, right? Especially like in today's context with no backing track. So as you saw in the demo or jam of today's video, the notes I'm hitting are helping me identify what chords I'm on. And you know, playing the changes is just that. It's if you're isolated from the band mix, can they still hear the chords happening with your solo? So Scarlet Begonias, not a life-changing difficulty song, but it's a song that, you know, will make you think. First thing is first, we have to know our chord progression. We can start like this. Um. That's fully in the key of B. You know, it's only really three chords. Um, B, E, and then A. In the key of B, our one chord, our four chord, our flat seven chord, back to one. 
So before, you know, in my opinion, before doing anything soloing, you have to have a good understanding of that harmony. And to get there, you know, that's just playing with the recording, just constantly, you know? Then you have that freedom with chords and if there's anything you know I'd rather have let's say you all and my zoom students you know I'd rather have you have the ability to play a full song with no solo than play a solo and don't know how to play the full song the song is everything you know so with that being said in the key of B, specifically B mixolydian, because we have this A, this flat seven. Now my thought process, where is everywhere that I can play the B mixolydian scale? And that comes back to caged system. I probably sound like a broken record, but it does. A lot of this is just fundamentals done effortlessly, whether it's Garcia, you know, Mayer, Jeff Matheson, um, Stu Allen, you know, it's just fundamentals done perfectly. So B mixolydian, we can start off, you know, here, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A natural, B. B mixolydian. The perfect world. You have equally amount of comfort with those scales across the fingerboard as you do with the chords. And again, there is no substitution to getting the fluidity. It's literally getting the guitar and just running scales. Just practice, practice, practice. Again, there is no shortcut. How do we apply it? That is where maybe a lot of us at one point we stumble. Before you can run, meaning in this case, playing virtuosic solos, you have to know how to walk. The reality is that could mean a very uncool solo, right? Something like.
That's playing the changes essentially in its most fundamental form. Over the E, E major. There's my B chord. D sharp major third root. Then I went to the A, chords. E major bend. Back to home base. You want to do an octave higher? Sim is X solo. different ending. there to get back to the B triad. Those solos, you know, I'm emphasizing the root and or the major third degree. That, or those two notes will help me identify the chord's movement, right? And it takes, you know, maybe a fundamental solo like that to then get, whether it's a week, two weeks, three weeks, to the point where you're saying the same solo, but you're adding more notes to it. You're just giving more context and more ideas to your thought, you know? Um, point here, I'm thinking freestyle. Back to the top. starts over again. So I guess in conclusion, there is no escaping putting the work in. You have to put the work in. You know, if it's the smallest notes, if it's just for two weeks playing the rhythm, then two weeks understanding the chords, then with the backing track, then playing by yourself. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. There is no hiding behind the work. Right. But like today's video, you have tools to help understanding the chords, understanding the, the harmony, which leads to, in this case, B mixolydian scale. You know, the next level would be, you know, understanding what notes make up the chords so you know what notes you can hit. Then it comes to making your solo. Simple is key.
do all that, practice, have fun, listen to the music of the Grateful Dead so you understand context. And over time, you will develop this ear that will lend itself really well to playing the changes. Well, all right, guys, that is today's video, Playing the Changes 101. I really hope this video gave you all some ideas to do when you pick up the guitar next when practicing the music of the Grateful Dead. These are all tools that I still use every single day when trying to make my own solos because it's kind of like cooking. You have the ingredients and you can make whatever you want. The same thing with the solos. The more tools you have, whether it's understanding the harmony, the chord progression, the scales, the context of what you're trying to aim for, the more fun you can have and more freedom ultimately you have when improvising over these songs and end up hopefully making solos like Garcia, Mayer, Jeff Matheson, etc., etc. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.